So it's been over a month now since I released my video, This Rapping Hitman Claimed 11 Bodies, The Bloodhound Lil Jeff Story. Now, I just want to say a big thank you to everybody that checked out this video. A lot of work, hustle, effort, research went into putting this together. It's over three hours long. Some people have made the little quip that this video is longer than Lil Jeff's whole career. Now, not going to deny or confirm that, but I think what I wanted to do is make a fully comprehensive deep dive on the Lil Jeff story that covered absolutely everything from the start of his life to his death to the aftermath and the mythology around him because this guy very quickly became the new King Von and I know that gets banded around a lot, especially by me, but the fact is... This guy and his legacy was cemented very quickly. A lot of things happened in a very short space of time. And I wanted to make sure that I touched on all of those points and I told the full story in in a in, you know in a in a good amount of time. So we ended up going three hours on the, the Lil Jeff documentary. Super proud of this documentary, man. This is one of my favorite um documentaries that I've ever made. I'm so proud of my team that worked on this man. The A team really smashed it. I just want to give a huge shout out to everybody. The crushed it, my guy Miko, my guy Aldo, shout out to Samantha, shout out to James, shout out to every single person, my guy Georgie, smashed it on this video, okay, yes, a lot of people work on these videos, okay, it's a whole gang, a whole squad, all right, a lot went into this, and everyone smashed it, super proud of you guys, um, it's a super interesting video, a crazy deep dive, a proper, just, a proper, like, like a real life story uh, an in uh, i don't want to say an incredible life story i don't want to say little jeff lived an incredible life per se because ultimately there was a lot of negativity but as far as what this story encapsulates in modern day chicago the state of drill music the state of youth culture the state of gang culture everybody wants to be a rapping killer now for a minute king von having seven bodies was the craziest thing to ever happen in chicago now it looks tame in comparison and that's the unfortunate state of things people want to blame me for that it's not my fault i i'm i'm just documenting this absolutely wild phenomenon People act like some dude sat in Bogner is actually having an impact on what's really going on. But the reality is, I'm just documenting something absolutely wild and insane, like Wick City, wild, insane, and crazy that's going on in the city. Um, and I'm, I'm, I'm just, you know, I'm, I'm grateful that I get to do this. Um, I'm also grateful that, um, you know, everybody was interested to hear about this story. And, uh, you know, I'm grateful for the internet that I'm able to do so much research. I'm able to use resources like Google and Reddit and and the, all the different Chicago Tribune articles to actually, from over here in sunny old Bogdan Regis, to be able to actually break everything down from start to finish and actually get to the point of exactly what happened with this guy and we didn't uh, we didn't understand every single uh murder that that little jeff claims but to be honest i believe him he was talking about i got 11 10 hats 11 hats i do believe him um it is it is messed up but it's absolutely wild so just want to have a little uh, little recap as i said this was this was well this was the most popular comment on the video this documentary is longer than his entire rap career and i think that's one of the sad things because i could see having spent we probably spent uh, uh man uh, uh, probably a month probably a full month maybe slightly less doing nothing but research for this video and uh you know it was a short-lived rap career he wasn't around long but i think lil jeff made some incredible music i was actually incredibly impressed by the quality of the music that lil jeff was making and he was taking the rap game the sort of drill music back to an earlier time of this like very sort of laid back druggy influenced drill music that was violent but it had a laid back tone and i feel like it's actually really interesting i know people are describing him as a perk sniffing demon but um i think that lil jeff actually was doing quite a lot for the rap game the way that he was sort of driving the music it, it, the drill violent music to a more laid back uh he's not melodic but the beats that he was choosing i just thought that was a really interesting aspect of it so um you know it was an incredible body of work but it was a short rap career he wasn't around for very long and that that is unfortunate you know the guy was just about finding his talent for music as well as his talent for a, a seemingly murdering people and bro you couldn't do both man you couldn't do both people say not making the basketball team is an insane reason to join the gang now if you've watched the video you'll know that a big part of little jeff's early story was the fact that he was trying to become a you know he wanted to be a professional basketball player and it just didn't work out for him and, and then you know he ends up having his uh his brother goes to jail, his cousin gets killed, and he just he just loses himself into the streets. He immerses himself into the streets, gets deep 
jumps off the porch, dumps, jumps deep into the streets very quickly, and before you know it, he's killed multiple people. He's quite good at gang warfare, and it's unfortunate. So there's another comment here that says, to say Lil Jeff's parents failed him is an understatement. It is very sad. Um, you know, seeing Lil Jeff's mother and father both comment on his death in such, I wouldn't say a positive term, but it's like his father, the way he's talking about it, is it's like, yeah, clear the streets. We're about to turn up and people are about to get shot up be because of my son's death. Then you've got his mother's posting stuff saying that when he was alive, catching bodies, she was messaging him saying, I can't believe my son's name is ringing bells in the streets like this. Is that my boy? It's, it's actually wild, um, the attitude uh, that was displayed by his parents. So this is... Um, this is an aspect of this story that I sort of like. I mean, we, we had YBC Doll's father commenting on his death as well, saying that it was a setup. And unfortunately, I think it's something that we're going to see more and more is that you've got these young demonic rappers that are doing a madness in the streets. And then we're slowly finding out that their parents, maybe not necessarily implicated in it, but it's almost like you get an understanding. If that's how Jeff's parents were, were behaving when he was alive, no wonder he continued to catch bodies and wage warfare on the streets. It's, it's, it's messed up. It's tragic. But you can sort of understand, you know, that that's the culture in Chicago. This is the streets is no longer the streets. It's now a Call of Duty map. I mean, 11, 11 bodies is crazy. Like, I actually, I, I'm like, bruh, how? how? Like, I, but I believe him. I believe him. In Chicago, they spend more time video chatting their enemies than their family. Now, that's the tragic truth. That's the tragic truth. How many times are we going to see in these videos two ops hopping on live? Damn near grinning from ear to ear that they're on live with their op, bro. Like... You know, you should be grinning ear to ear that you're having a catch up with your grandma, but you're excited to be on the phone with your op. I remember seeing, what was it, No Limit Cairo hopping on live with different ops of his. I remember he was hopping on live with KTS Dre. And it's like, damn near looking excited to have the ops on the line, man. It's crazy. And a lot of people are comparing this to video games. They're saying they're playing real life GTA over fake chains, fake watches and rental SRTs is crazy. Um, most famous quote, I got 10 kills, one more on Bill Russell. Funeral quote. He was a loving and would give his last and helped others. Wow. It is crazy. It is crazy. Jumping off the porch at 18 is the most backwards-ass thing I've ever heard. Uh, it, is, it is messed up. Um, shout out to everybody that enjoyed the video, man. Someone got through a 12-hour night shift with this video. People saying Trap City Rob looked like he can change oil, put in the alternator, and cook the hell out of some ribs. Shout out to the Unk Gang, man. we got to give it to the Unk Gang. Um... <laughs> it's crazy you can listen to his entire discography twice and still catch 30 minutes of this documentary it's true man there wasn't that much music but i feel like that is what's gonna kind of uh that's what's gonna kind of carry lil jeff's music for the long run because there's so little of it i think it's going to be analyzed and poured over you know it's, it, there's a deficit of lil jeff music for the in for the impact that he had on chicago and on shy Rackology and this culture you know more broadly and culturally the footprint is massive compared to the actual music that he was putting out, but the music was very good. It was actually a very concentrated and high quality collection of music that, you know, essentially cemented his legacy. He didn't need to release a lot of music, but the music that he did release where he's talking about running in people's homes, shooting at them, combined with the CCTV footage of him actually trying to run into someone's home and getting shot himself is absolutely, you know, it's just, it, it's it's a poetic irony that is just beyond comprehension, quite frankly. Uh, this is an interesting. Fun fact, Lil Durk lived on Bloodhound Territory too with his mum on 79th in Cottage Grove. That is very interesting. Um, two things confirmed in this video. One, sitting in a parked car may as well be a form of suicide. Two, if you get taken to a university hospital, you may as well have gone directly to the morgue. Yeah, it is tragic. The amount of, uh, the amount of like, news articles that I read, and it's like, and they were taken to the university hospital and died. It is messed up it is very sad i can't imagine how how fucking terrifying it must be to like you know die in the back of an ambulance on the way to a hospital or get to the hospital and check out you know um my heart bleeds to when i even imagine what some of these guys went through in their final moments i know that's very morbid but um these are the things that i do think about man and it is very messed up um it hit different when the real jeffrey Dahmer was a homosexual cannibal you know what i mean you said it man you said it but it's absolutely crazy um, Brandon Buckingham, I'm going out to film with Bloodhound Vert in a few months. Brandon, stay safe, my man. Please stay safe. Jesus Christ, for the love of God. All right, stay safe out there. Um, a little Jeff didn't hit the streets until later in life. He started his senior year of high school. Damn, you know our society's crumbling when being a senior in high school is considered late to start gangbanging. Yeah, it is pretty messed up. It is pretty messed up. Um, 
you know, the Lil Jeff video, man, I, I'm, I'm really proud that I was able to put together that story in the way that I did. I think it was something that really needed breaking down. The amount of people that have been asking me and following up with me trying to find out, you know, the, the background behind that story um, was overwhelming, to be honest, after he passed. You know, it's, it's not dissimilar to, like, how since YBC Duel's death, you know, I've just been inundated with people that are asking me to, to cover the story and, like, you know, get deep into it. Um, that's what they want. And, uh, you know, on the one hand, I have a whole bunch of stories that I want to cover, and they're not necessarily all violence. You know, I'm really proud of how the Diddy 50 video did uh, an essentially mostly non-violent story, unless you account for Diddy's dirty, dastardly, despicable um, diddlings. But, um, you know, a non-violent, more throwback story. And I want to be able to, to do both. You know, I think the Bloodhound Jeff story is important. I would never listen to anybody that says, you know, you shouldn't tell these stories or that you shouldn't talk about the gang stories. Um, at the end of the day, that's what's going on. This is the culture. This is what's going on in society. And we do need to talk about this. People that act like, oh, Trap Law Ross should just not be able to talk. He should just not be able to comment on anything ever. Like, what the hell are you talking about, man? This is journalism. This is journalism. If you were, if you felt strongly about Israel-Palestine, which is a topic I'm not that educated on, but like, if you felt very strongly about that, the, the goal for you to say, oh, the news shouldn't be able to report on that. It's what's going on. It's the facts of the world. It's the very unfortunate and grisly facts of the world. And whatever side that you're on, to, to suggest that you shouldn't be able to report the facts and you shouldn't be able to broadcast the information about what's going on in the world is absurd. So I think it's really important that we have this conversation about this this out of control spiraling violence in Chicago. You know, that's the war that I'm actually very educated on. That's the war that I'm trying to add a lot of context to. And um, it is very sad. But for, to, to, to deny the, the reality or to deny the being allowed to have the conversation would just be ridiculous. So I think it's really important to tell those stories. I'm also very blessed to be able to tell this, you know, classic throwback stories like Diddy versus 50. And uh, just so you know, man, my goal going forward, I'm aiming to have weekly videos. Uh, my dream is to have a weekly video up on both channels. Uh, Trap Law Ross and Trap More Ross every single week, a new video on a different topic with a big variety. Uh, I'd love to do, you know, a gangster rap drill story every single month, a more throwback story every single month, maybe a non-hip-hop story every month. You know, if I'm dropping weekly, I could do way more videos on different topics and hit you with the variety that I know is needed. All right, I know we're thirsty for variety. I know you're tired of... These guys are tired of Chicago, but these guys don't want a UK story, but these guys want a throwback story. I'm trying my best to build the team and give it to you all. So all of the videos that you're suggesting to me are in the works. They're on the way. They're coming. But I just want to say a huge thank you to everybody that enjoyed the Lil Jeff video. I felt like it was a very important piece of Chicago history. I think that's an artist that people are going to be talking about for years to come as somebody that was influential and was really a tipping point in, you know, the genre maybe becoming too violent and maybe just getting a little bit out of control. And I feel like it, it's 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 hard to even imagine anybody going more crazy with it than, you know, 11 bodies, allegedly. So it'll be interesting to see where the drill scene goes from here. But, um, you know, the Lil Jeff story, I think, was was a very important one. And uh, there's going to be more like it on the way. You know, we've spoke about YBC Doll today. Obviously, Fulio is a big story. We are doing a lot of research into all of the major stories. Everything you guys suggest to me, we're looking into. But it's a very complicated process behind the scenes to decide what actually gets done, what's good enough to put out, etc. So hang tight, gang. We're going to come with some fire content very soon. I've got a lot more stuff coming. And I appreciate everybody who checked out all of the recent documentaries.